Okay, I'm going to show you a method that involves using a device called a colour emitter to determine the concentration of reducing sugar in lemonade. Now you could actually do this for any kind of fizzy sugary liquid. Okay, now the first thing you have to do is to prepare a range, a dilution series of standard glucose solutions. Now to do this, the technician has provided 10% glucose solution and you'll need distilled water and a couple of different syringes. Now if you've got 10% glucose solution to start with, it's quite easy to make a range of dilutions and the table here shows you the different volumes you'll need to make 10 centimetres cubed. So for example, the 10% glucose is already prepared. If we want to make a 5% glucose solution, we would simply use 5 centimetres cubed of the 10% mixed with 5 centimetres cubed of water. If we want to make a 2% glucose solution, it would be 2 centimetres cubed of the 10% glucose solution with 8 centimetres cubed of distilled water, and so on. So we're going to end up with a range of 10, 5, 2, 1, 0 0.5 and 0% glucose. Once we've got our range of solutions, the next thing we're going to do is to actually carry out a Benedict's test on these solutions. Now to carry out a Benedict's test, to each solution we will take one centimetre cubed of the solution in the test tube and we will add five centimetres cubed of Benedict's. We will then place the solutions in a water bath at 90 degrees for five minutes for the reaction to take place. As soon as we've removed the solutions from the water bath, we should find that we actually get a range of different results. So, for example, here is the 0% glucose solution, and you can see that all of the blue Benedict's remains, there's no reaction taken place there. Whereas at the other end of the scale, this was the 10% glucose solution. I'm just going to give it a little shake, actually, because it's settled out, and you can see in there, We've got quite a lot of brick red precipitate because a lot of the Benedict's reagent has reacted with the reducing sugar that was in that sample there. Now, as well as testing the standard glucose solutions, you also need to carry out an identical Benedict's test using one centimetre cubed of your drink, your drink, and do make sure you don't use sugar free. Uh, so one centimetre cubed of that, again, with five centimetres cubed of Benedict solution in a water bath at 90 degrees C for five minutes for the reaction to take place. Now the next step is to actually filter the range of solutions that you've just prepared. So I'll show you that now. I've already done that earlier. And this is our range of solutions, the results of the Benedict test, once we've filtered them. And you can actually clearly see here that the solution that had the highest concentration of glucose actually has a large amount of red precipitate that's collected in the filter paper there. And if we look at the colours of the solutions, you can see there's a range from sort of blue here that looks like the original Benedict's, because that, obviously, the Benedict's has not been used up because there was no glucose to react with, right the way through to the other end where all of the Benedict's reagent has reacted with the glucose to produce precipitate. And so we've got no blueness left. The next step is that we're actually going to take these solutions. So if I remove the filter funnels there, and we're going to place them in these small plastic vials, which are called cuvettes. So I'm going to fill a cuvette with my first solution. That's the filtrate going in there. Okay, um, and we're going to use a device called a colour emitter now to measure how blue that is. So let me move these out of the way and show you the colour emitter. This is a colour emitter. And a colour emitter measures the intensity of colour in solutions. Now this one, I've set it with a red filter. So this is going to measure, it's going to shine a red light through the samples I place in there and it's going to work out how much of that red has been absorbed. Now because this has got a lot of blue in it, it should absorb a lot of red light. So I'll try the first one here. 
Now before I start, I'm going to use a cuvette that's got distilled water in it. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to press the R button just to make sure I've zeroed it, so reset it. Then I'm going to remove the distilled water and I'm going to place my first filtrate in there, which is from the 0% glucose solution. I'm going to press test. Now this one should absorb quite a lot of the red light because it's got a lot of blue Benedicts left. And it gives me a reading of 1.94. I'm now going to repeat this procedure for all of the other filtrates. And when I've done that, I'm going to use the results to plot what is known as a calibration curve. So here I have a calibration curve that I produced earlier. Notice you've got concentration of glucose. These are the standard glucose concentrations across the x-axis. And up here, you've got the percentage absorption of red lights or absorbance. And we've plotted this, as you can see, by joining the points up. Now then, I'm also going to test the filtrate from the sport, well, from the fizzy drink. You can use anything, a sports drink, as I said, lemonade, Sprite today. And when I did this, I found out that the absorbance of red light was 1.75. So all I need to do now is take my ruler and a pen and if I go in here, so we've got 1.5 there, so there would be an absorbance of 1.75. So if I draw a line across there and down to the x-axis, I can actually read off now the concentration of glucose in the sports drink, or actually it could be any reducing sugar, will we'll react with the Benedicts. And so in this case, that would be slightly less than 